Good afternoon once again. Today is Saturday, May the 16th, uh, 2020, and the most important uh, news that we have is, of course, that we have found uh, zero new uh, case for today, recorded for today, which uh, gives us all uh, joy, but of course, we will, we will still remain vigilant. We are one day away from the relaxation me measures in the second phase, what we call the reopening or the unlocking. Uh, when it becomes effective tomorrow. Again, the details of the easing of restrictions uh, was published in the Royal Gazette yesterday and will be translated shortly, so please uh, check for the specific inquiries uh, for detailed information. Yesterday, I also highlighted in the briefing about some main points regarding the uh, reduction of the curfew hours, and I believe we have a slide on that. Uh, the reduction by one hour and also, I recapped other general information for the viewers uh, to know what to expect in the days ahead. For the briefing of the spokesperson, the spokesperson talked about the Thai Shana uh, platform, which we mentioned since yesterday, and on how to use the platform. And at the end of uh, the summary today, I'll go into some uh, details uh, with an infographic on this, but basically at tomorrow at 6 a.m. Uh, this platform will be uh, operational and uh, you, business owners can register at the website and uh, today uh, they can download the information guide to prepare as well as ask questions uh, on the hotline which is 1119 operational tomorrow at 6 a.m. The spokesperson also talked about the delisting of uh, China and the Republic of Korea from the list of dangerous infection zones on the part of uh, the, Thailand's, the Thailand's list. Uh, there were questions whether this would lead to other concerns and the spokesperson explained uh, that these countries experienced virus uh, first uh, globally and now have developed good experiences and have had ex effective responses in the general picture. Hence there is no uh, further reason to keep these two countries on the list. Other countries still on the list uh, are according to the assessment of the current situation. Uh, the concern now is also about the uh, possible incoming of foreign tourists. Uh, that concern is actually unfounded because some of the measures uh, existing uh, regarding the incoming movements uh, are still in place, uh, such as uh, the flights, uh, we will still hold the same preventive measures regarding requiring uh, documentation, uh, fit to fly, and the state quarantine, and the rest. This was actually uh, published in the Royal Gazette, uh, the removal, the delisting of these countries, uh, China, including the special administrative zones of uh, Hong Kong and Macau and the Republic of Korea from the list previously designated as dangerous disease uh, zones. But in practical terms, this does not change the fact uh, of the quarantine and all the measures needed. There is still no inbound flight, so therefore the measures are still the same. We, today we also had a guest speaker, the Secretary General of the Office of the National Security Council, who talked about the second phase of the relaxation measures, wherein he highlighted that the relaxation phase in the relaxation phase, Thailand is actually accepting a risk in order to respond to the economic needs of the population. But this is an assessed risk. And of course, if the situation gets worse, there will be a reassessment. And he also talked about uh, the question about the strictness of movement, about quarantine, wherein he explained that uh, movement will still be strictly monitored, uh, interprovincial and discouraged, of course. Of course, there are still no commercial flights. And uh, the curfew in the, uh, starting tomorrow, the reduction of the hours of the curfew is, will be in place. But although there will be a reduction in hours, it will still be uh, strictly monitored. He also added that uh, every relaxation of measures is based on the current situation assessment, the second wave uh, occurring around the world. Also, uh, the need for everyone's co continued cooperation because if the compliance rate is good, we would have confidence in relaxing more measures. Today, we also had another uh, guest speaker, the director of the Fiscal Policy 
office who briefed on the relief measures uh, for those impacted by uh, COVID, wherein he highlighted the relief measures and assistance being catered to the nine different groups, the nine main groups who are qualified. And the principles of relief are to reduce the uh, spending uh, of the uh, people who are qualified, as well as enable them to deal with the current situation uh, economically as well. So there has already been an extension of the tax, income tax filing, special, special measures for utility bills reduction, including income guarantees and uh, emergency and special credit offered with low interest and no guarantees needed. The spokesperson also talked about the situation wherein he summarized that around 80% of cases are at working age in general and were asymptomatic. Many contracted the virus from crowded areas and still around 50 provinces are without new cases for the past 28 days. The spokesperson also talked about the, he also shared the preventive measures of other countries around the world such as the Republic of Korea. So moving on to recap the general situation and the numbers that we have. We have a slide uh, for you on this as well. So as mentioned, today we did not record or find any new confirmed cases. That was a cause of a brief applause here at the CCSA for today. So as you can see in the past days, it was the numbers were around zero and then one and then seven and now zero. So zero, one, seven, zero. So hoping that in the coming days, we will continue to have zero that's a very positive number to look forward to every day. Zero, zero, null, null, soon. That's a very good number. In Thailand, we have this number for today. So the cumulative number of cases remains at 3,025, as you can see on the screen. Recoveries is 2,855. The numbers look like they are about to meet soon and with zero fatalities. The highest, another observation is that the highest uh, number of people infected in general are actually found, still found in Bangkok uh, as, a, in general, in, as a general average. So the second province is Phuket, based on the ratio, uh, comparatively, comparative ratio of 100,000 uh, persons in the population. So Bangkok first, and then Phuket. So once again, uh, the measures, the new normal, it's a shared goal for all of us in towards this relaxation. Every person in this kingdom, uh, be you Thai or non-Thais, those who call Thailand home, have an important role to play uh, and to make a contribution to this effort. The enforcement and violations uh, in terms of business establishments, the overall picture we have is from the 3rd to the 15th of May yesterday, a total of 200, over 222,000 establishments were inspected. And a percentage have uh, not been fully in compliance uh, with the measures or violated the measures. So we hope that this will continue to be uh, something that businesses will look forward to, to achieve effective protection for our public, especially as tomorrow, as you know, the department stores will be open with certain restrictions so, of course, it's not time to let our guard down. It's a team effort. The issue of Thai nationals abroad, I'll move on to that for repatriation of Thai nationals. To date, around 7,666 Thai nationals repatriated by air from 36 countries and territories around the world. The projection, uh, 16th to the 23rd of May, around 24 more flights, as you can see on the screen now. We also have, as always, images from the embassies around the world. We have an image from the Royal Thai Embassy in Dakar, Senegal, who joined hands with volunteers to donate items to the Abbey de Cour Moussa, a church, uh, which included 1,000 kilograms of rice for approximately 40 uh, priests or friars uh, in that uh, church and families living in the area. It also happens to be the 40th anniversary of Thailand-Senegal diplomatic relations this year. Another image is from the Royal Thai Embassy in Paris, uh, France. 
you see the ambassador speaking to Thais being repatriated back. These, this group traveled back uh, from parts of Paris and as well as Algeria and Morocco, uh, who joined in in Paris to board the same repatriation flight back to Thailand. As usual, we also have uh, good news stories for you. The Tourism Authority of Thailand has come out with a touching uh, reminder uh, for our friends from abroad that Thai people are, of course, uh, thinking of you and your well-being as well. Uh, and when, and soon, as soon as you will be able to come back uh, to visit Thailand, in the meantime, uh, sending you best wishes through the tradition of weaving carp fish, or pla tapian. It's a symbolic traditional. The meaning is for good health. It's in Thai, pla uh, tapian. It's a carp, carp fish figure. Um, for our friends abroad. And this tradition has special significance because the woven carpfish signify good health uh, for the recipient. So they released a video on this. Uh, we're still connected in our hearts, although we are far away from each other during this pandemic. For the portion of uh, Q&A, we received some inquiries regarding, a number of inquiries regarding foreign nationals currently outside the kingdom. Uh, when will they be able to return to Thailand, particularly those with work permits or who have families uh, here in the kingdom? So this is a challenging issue, but we are currently not able to predict with enough certainty the project, traje trajectory of the virus still. Because although we are currently experiencing a positive trend, a very good number, the latest second phase of relaxation of measures, has, which has been approved yesterday, it does not, does not mean that we are able to allow commercial flights to enter the kingdom as yet. We still have to balance this with our ability to quarantine the capacity of treatment of, and uh, for in receiving incoming travelers. Currently also, we are repatriating Thai nationals back, which we hope uh, mostly will be completed uh, within June. But for foreign nationals who are stranded outside of Thailand and wish to return to Thailand and who have work permits, the advice is to contact your employers in Thailand in case that your work permit is about to expire because there is a process that your employers can uh, issue the documentation for the extension of work permits uh, in the meanwhile. So as soon as the flights resume. Uh, this can be done in preparation uh, until the normal flights are allowed. We're proceeding phase by phase, step by step, for the health and safety of everyone. We understand your sacrifice and fully empathize with your situation. And those who are already in Thailand, for foreigners who are already in Thailand, they may have questions about documents as well. So you can contact the immigration hotline, 1178, for specific uh, inquiries. The issue of the application, the uh, Thai China application, which the spokesperson mentioned. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, we have uh, some contact numbers for you on screen as well right now in English. Is the issue of the application, uh, Thai China uh, application that we mentioned and the spokesperson mentioned today. First of all, we'd like to say that it's not an actual application. We call it, a, it's a platform, actually, the Thai China platform. It was formally, formally launched, and as mentioned, it will be uh, effective, used uh, starting uh, tomorrow to help support the second phase of relaxation developed by the Ministry of Digital Economy and administered by the Ministry of Public Health. So in following the five principles, uh, as we talked about often, social distancing, cleanliness, there are five principles and one platform. So this is the one platform that we're talking about. For the general public, consumers, all you have to do is to use uh, the, your, your phone, your cell phone, to, uh, for the function of the QR reader. And then when you go to establishments, there will be a QR code for you to use the QR reader and uh, sort of like check in uh, that restaurant or establishment and then check out. Um, and of course, this checking in and checking out with a QR reader, will the information will not be submitted uh, to or linked to any third party um, at all. For business owners, you can start to load the information and then when effective tomorrow at 6 a.m. tomorrow, you can display the QR code in front of your establishments so that people can check in. 
And for any inquiries, the hotline specifically for the Tai Chana platform is the hotline is 119, sorry, 1119 with up to 160 telephone lines. So in particular, the website is worldwideweb.taichana.com. Today you can already go into the website to get information and prepare your business venues. The website is currently in Thai, but it will be developed to include English. So if you do not read or write Thai, you can ask someone to assist you if you are a business owner. If you are a customer, all, as mentioned, all you have to do is take the QR code uh, reader function from your mobile phone when visiting, and you'll be checked in, and all the functions will work. Um, so for individuals, quite easy. Uh, access the web-based platform. Uh, check in into when entering the establishment. The level of congestion in the establishment will be displayed to see how many people are in that restaurant. When you leave, you can check out, and then you can rate the establishment, which is optional. And there will be free COVID testing if you are notified in the platform of a possible risk that the restaurant you actually visited found infected uh, persons. That's for individuals. And for establishments, businesses, as mentioned, you can refer to the website and receive the QR code, display, print out the QR code in front of your establishment. And you have to, of course, manage the level of congestion of people visiting your uh, restaurant or establishment. And you can view the ratings and reviews of your establishment via the website. So it's a very useful platform. So hoping that it will be uh, working very well uh, tomorrow if there are any faults or any things that, that need improvement, uh, we will look into it. Uh, so thank you very much for uh, taking part in the use of this, launching this, this platform uh, together. It's part of uh, our new normal. So in concluding, I'd like to say that, of course, tomorrow, as we get ready to reopen and unlock more businesses and venues that are already, that are ready and complying with the public safety measures, let's make sure that we continue to abide by the various measures in the new normal, make them our new habits to keep the second wave of infections at bay. So therefore, we should continue to help each other during the new normal. And uh, we all thank you very much for this cooperation. We are stronger and better together. As the spokesperson mentioned, Yakan Rauyu Ruamu Pua that is Apart, we are stronger, and together, we move ahead. So thank you very much again. Please stay safe. Have a pleasant afternoon. Kapkun Krap.